and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and joining me today is Silver Quill. Every time I think I'm out, they pull me back in. <laughs> also joining us today is Jacob. Hello, everybody. As it seems that today we got a uh, script flip going on. Mm-hmm. Indeedy. And in today's episode, we are going to review the <laughs> Ladybug and Cat Noir, the movie. It came out on Netflix on July 28th, and we're reviewing it now. I don't know why. Just because, I guess. <laughs> so, uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir, the movie, uh, let's see, is an animated musical film based on the show. It was released on in France on July 5th, originally planned to be released around summer of 2022. Don't know, don't care. So, anywho, um, this is the movie for the TV series that we've been kind of... What's the word I'm looking for, Silver? Um, Riffing on? Is that a word? Riff? Or is there another better word? Yeah. Well, I don't know if we're (laughs) we're reviewing it, to be sure. It's it's sort of abridging the series. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So we we riff on the series. Now, uh, the movie is kind of compressed, really. Um, I'll talk about that when we kind of start but anywho uh, before we fully review first impressions are in order and silver what do you think well let's see it's it's a slow to start opening but i enjoyed it for the most part how to best put it it's a fun way to if you're new to it to get the basics but then well you, you do kind of wonder about who's really the main character and who's the emotional heart of this whole thing. Hmm. And I'm afraid, miraculous, I got weirded out because I started with the Christmas special, with the, uh, Christmas special which was also a musical. And ever since then, I've been in a constant state of, wait, what? Because this series, I'm afraid, I don't know if I'll ever really become a fan. I don't think I will. But watching the movie... That's not, to say it's a, it, that's not to say it's a bad series, it's just not for me. All right. But the movie, um, you coming from the series and watching this, uh, how does your overall impressions are? Like, has is it, to, is, in, is it in your opinion that this is a bit better from the series? Well, it's certainly easier to track as they actually have a beginning, middle, and end. I've known from word online that there's a very different ending for the uh, for the uh, series, or at least the end of a <laughs> current arc. Mm-hmm. I don't want to give don't want to give spoilers if people haven't seen, but uh, I'd say it's a bit. It's easier to track. It avoids some of the drawn out elements that people that frustrate people in the show but uh at the same time if you're not on board you're not really on board Ah, that's all there is to it all righty then uh jacob what about you well as it was mentioned earlier it's uh this is basically the abridged version of the series and uh well i didn't really watch uh, the series that much all well, I remember way back in 2000, I don't know which one tens already. Mm-hmm. I remember a whole lot of promotion for this, like this is the new sil- uh, Sailor Moon or whatever, and there's going to be like 3D animation version, a 2D animation version. And uh, I don't know, this day and age, it's sort of just, it's all quiet. Oh, so wait, you saw all that before it came out? Wow. Um. Yeah. Honestly, I I didn't saw that. Like, I, I don't even remember how I got into this series. I just remember like just watching it, and that's about it. Huh? All right, fascinating. And I this remember is, it because sorry? I remember it specifically because there was this one uh, promotional theme song that constantly used to play. Well, okay, no, not used to play. I just remember being spam either on Twitter or was it Tumblr? I forget which one. The catchy song. 
Hmm, the intro, I think. Well, sort of an intro. <clears throat> oh. Yep, it, it, it's a theme song. The theme song's pretty good. Yeah. That's why I can't get it out of my head. Get but other out. than that, <laughs> yeah. But other than that, uh, well, I didn't really watch that <coughs> much of the Ladybug series, except just I don't know, occasional uh, when I saw it on TV or something. Mm. But other than that, I wasn't really well watching it, except for I don't know. I know there's a villain that's basically turning people into monsters, like sort of what happens in Sailor Moon. Mm. But uh, oh yeah, uh, and I don't know if I don't know if we should start it, if I should mention it now before we actually start or uh, I go ahead, man. Say it out. Well, uh, the main character is better in this than in the uh, series? series, from what I've seen. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> yeah, and we can uh, address that uh, when we get yep. into it. All right. As for me. Um, knowing the series, I won't say by heart, but I've been watching it from season one to now, uh, which is season five, but haven't really fully watched season five. And I, I get the frustration from the fandom about, now, just kiss, just kiss, you fucks, just kiss. And. Whoa, Norman, <laughs> aggressive with your shipping. How many it... episodes did it take to get to that point finally? Oh my god. Or it didn't uh, happen yet. So let's just say... not there yet, it sounds like. Let's just say that it took them almost four and a half seasons just to get them... Just to get them to be a couple. <coughs> How long is a season? Oh, 26 episodes. 20, the, the, the standard 20... What was it silver for a standard season? Standard season? Like 24? Yeah. yeah, yeah, something like that, Some, something around that. Like, uh, a season is, what, 26? So, times that by... Yeah, uh, yeah t- times that by 5. And then... So, that's... Uh, isn't that 80 episodes? No, no, give me a second. Let, I, I pull out the calculator. So, 26 times 5, that will be 130. Oh, 26, so... 36. 130 so, episodes in total. So basically, it's a, more than 100 episodes of this. Hold on, let me just... Oh. oh, no, I'm afraid to open this. Hold on. Okay, there we go. Ah, yes, there we go. 100 <coughs> episodes of this. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> of blue balling. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, God. Oh, all the blue balls. <laughs> uh, so where was I again? So yeah, um, com- coming from the series and watching this, uh, one thing in my mind that snapped uh, or clicked was that, hey, this is an AU, uh, alternate universe. So... Better universe? Sorry, alternate. Alternate universe. Yes, but I said a better universe? Kind of, yeah. To be, to be honest, yeah. Because uh, the timeline for this one, right? If you heard what they mentioned in the early of the episode, is that, oh, I'm going to... Uh, one of the bitch, uh, she mentions that, oh, I'm going to ask Adrian out to the uh, winter dance or something like that in December. And... The show, I'm assuming, starts early January, where usually the school year starts. I don't know. I'm, I'm just guessing. Probably I'm wrong, whatever it is. So, they they summarize five seasons of story into a year. And that's, that's just great. That's just great. And we, we, we kind of gotten past the whole stupid plan of doing this multiple times just to oh god <clears throat> so yeah uh, I, I'm so no more will they won't they yeah so yeah I, I'm, I'm kind of happy with this one I, I'm really happy with uh, what we got here <clears throat> so uh, let me open up stuff to drag into the pool uh, 
And like usual, before we start, uh, pause here and go give it a watch if you haven't. It's on Netflix and um, everywhere, I guess. So yeah. <coughs> Welcome back. So shall we start, gentlemen? <coughs> I don't know about gentlemen, but I'm here. <laughs> yes, Norman. Sing well, considering we said that this was going to be a uh, scriptlet, last time when we were reviewing the MLP Transformers crossover, Silver washed his uh, knowledge all over us. Now it's your turn, Norman. Nope, I have, I have. Oh yes, <laughs> I have no knowledge. All I have is rage and empathy. <laughs> And the, the thing is, right, the show is not bad until it gets bad. They're so... Oh, Marinette Dupin Cheng is one of those frustrating characters that you want to choke the life out of her and then slap her to revive her. That's in the series, by the way. The movie version is like... Tiki's just... Oh my god. Uh, it's it's in the musical. Tiki gets frustrated with her saying that I'll kick your butt, and like, wow, Tiki, you're hardcore. All right, I like you. Very hardcore. Mm. <clears throat> but anywho, we start off with Master Fu saying, "Do you believe in magic?" That sounds in familiar. Is hot. <laughs> I mean, Wasn't this like uh, Pat Morita's thing or something? From one of those old series where he basically talked about certain uh, fairy tales from around the world. I forgot what it was called. Not sure, but us coming from the MLP fandom, yes, we do believe in magic. Especially from unicorns. <laughs> or if you're a pyro. Up through that. So do you we... believe in magic? <laughs> Alright. Any hoopish boys. Um... <laughs> We get a quick introduction for what a miraculous is, what are they used for, what are their functions, and so on. And yeah, uh, it, it's a kind of a brief breakdown of the series in just a few minutes and explains everything clearly and precise. So yeah, that's that's awesome. Then we move into Shore of Paris. Uh, we see our quote-unquote main character, Marinette, who lives in a bakery with their parents, Tom and Sabine. And right off the start, we see that Marinette here is a klutz and so on. And uh, kind of embarrassed by her father because her father is kind of doting on her. But when you... Yep, big, powerful-looking man. Mm -hmm. But when you take a look... Just joking. Yeah. But when you take a look, see what he does, right? It's so freaking awesome. Uh, one thing to send her to school, uh, bake her cupcake-shaped unicorns. Like, that's awesome. <coughs> but her mother comes in for the save because, oh no, you're embarrassing the kid. Get out of here, old man. <laughs> and um, father goes uh, to the back room to take care of burning baguettes. So mom says a few words of encouragement and we start off with music. And I I'll say this. The show is a musical at its core. It has music for the show and two music for the credits so yeah all in all this is a musical and I'm just gonna skip the music part because if we nitpick on the music we will find a lot to kind of bash our head over unless you guys want to say anything that you saw specifically we, we can pause and talk about it well, I did want to bring up that Marinette's uh, singing voice actress sounds very different from her speaking voice. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know anything? Reminded Sorry. me a bit of Judy Jetson from the Jetsons movie. Mm. Do, do you know anything about that, Silva? I know very little about the casting, if that's what you mean. Ah. But 
just that she, I could tell it was a very, very different tone of voice, de- a little deeper and more adult. Mm. And here's the reason why for that one. Uh, thank you for pointing it out, Silver. Uh, the reason for that is that somehow, uh, even though um, voice actress for Lady Bug, give me a second, what was her name? She, she's, she's really... Uh, oh, no. Why, why am I not seeing her name on the wiki? I know it's V something. She, she, ah, Christ, Christina V. <clears throat> yeah, um, her, her voice actress does sing. If you Google or if you YouTube Christina V, she sung on a lot of cover songs for YouTubers and whatnot. And yeah, she has range. She, she knows how to sing. And she's also one of the demons for, uh, hell of a boss. And she sings for that one too. So yay. Uh, but the reason why for this one, from what I understand from one of the Patreons, Lag, said that the producer, director, just wanted to use the original French singer that Jacob linked to us on Discord. Yeah, she just wants uh, her to sing all the singing voice for her. Kind of a callback, I think. <clears throat> well, there you go. It's a callback, but I, I can't say it was a callback that really drew me into the singing. I know. It, it pulled me out real hard. Like, wait, what? That's so strange. <laughs> but at least I can say that it all... They didn't have a dabbing Santa Claus. That... That, that, that's good. That I was think. in the show. <laughs> that was in the Christmas special. Oh boy. <laughs> yes, but anywho, um, mo- moving forward, uh, we we see that uh, Marionette says she doesn't have friends yet. People know her and call to her, and she hides. Uh, she's a klutz, but she has a really active imagination. Blah blah blah. She she's just not full of confidence in herself. So that's a bit of a downside for the character. But <clears throat> moving forward, we see <coughs> some kind of uh, designer, Adrian Agress. Uh, he's the quote unquote. Um, for now, we, we see he's some kind of fashion artist who does clothing and whatnot. He has his own brands and assistants and so on. And in in the musical where Marinette was dancing and singing, we see her uh, creating her own fashion design and whatnot. I, to be honest, I feel like this is a red herring for people who don't really know the series well, because when you see what they set up for Marinette in her song, and when you see Adrian here, sorry, uh, Adrian, not, uh, Gabriel. Gabriel, thank you, uh, Gabriel Gress, you, 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 in your mind it clicks that, oh, uh, we'll see Marinette work with Gabe in later uh, later on in the show because they're both fashion designers and so on. Ooh, am I wrong to assume that, Silver, Jacob? Well, I I thought I always thought uh, Gabriel was a scientist. Ah, how did you came that uh, but, with how how did you come to that to conclusion? Well, I think it was. Especially around the America and the New York special, where he's like, "My theory proved correct. There are other miraculous." <laughs> uh, okay. Ah, uh, all right, all right, all right. So that that took you for a loop too, didn't it? <laughs> Very much. I was like, "Wait, he's he's a fashion designer." <laughs> I I can't work with that. <laughs> I just I've already seen Cruella, Ka- <laughs> or Cruella. Sorry. <laughs> I've already seen Cruella. The live action? Yes. Oh, no. Uh, Jacob, what about you? Uh, Was my assessment wrong? Or kind of like, yeah, I can see that happening. Well, honestly, I didn't really have any experience with uh, the series, as I mentioned to us. So, yeah, I just saw the guy to be like a fashion designer from the start. Yeah. So did it click with you like, oh, Marinette's into fashion 
and this guy is into fashion, so they'll work together later on in the show, or no, not at all. Well, it really didn't set up any, anything that she's gonna suddenly work with him. Ah, uh, alright, alright. Yeah, I mean, I, I can so, see yeah. that too, yeah. I can see the points. So, anywho, we yeah. move forward, we see that Marinette's heading to school, uh, we see um, the characters doing their own thing, and a, a, a jerk with a skateboard bumps into a marionette, and now uh, one of the richest girls in school has a beef with marionette and wants to bully her endlessly. Oh no, so bad. Whatever she will do. <coughs> but before that could happen... Sorry. Well, I mean... I Honestly, it's like, oh, a drop of coffee. Oh, my God. You you knew you were wearing white. Black and white? Stripes? Mm. Yep, black and white <coughs> sweater. That thing, those are going to attract stains like nobody's business. True, true. But at the same time, too, the confluence of events that happen to make this happen is... It's technically not her fault because that dumb kid with the skateboard bumped into her. While <sighs> feels like that idiot with the skateboard is going to be a problem in the future. Sort of. <laughs> but anywho, but something that they something that they forgot to ask earlier is in the series uh, Marinette also such a giant uh, walking disaster as she is in the movie. Uh, they tone it down a bit because reasons, but in the series, she's more of a klutz and not really the walking disaster that she is in the movie at the beginning. Uh, she, she's more of a klutz uh, whenever she's around Adrian, the hot boy of the school. But when she's not there, she's so capable and confident that it baffles me that why are you so why are you this way? Could you please stop? Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, <laughs> that's my feelings. <laughs> uh, but anywho, carrying on, uh, we we see that Chloe wants to beat the crap out of Marionette, but before she could do so, she's being recorded on um, tape. So that, oh, uh, if she does something, she'll get post. it'll be posted online and it'll be bad for image. So, yeah. So, this girl that kind of saved Marinette, her name is Alia, and they, uh, what you call this? They, they hit it off, being friends and whatnot. And, yeah, uh, they, they become good friends. And,. We see class happening where there's music class where Marinette has to play the recorder. There's a recorder, right? <clears throat> yep. Okay. So she plays it badly where everybody's kind of killing themselves because she plays bad. Uh, she tries to go on the balancing beam to do some acrobatic stunts and fails miserably. Um, I wonder how she's not dead. That's a miracle. Uh, she tries to do science. Oh, it's, it's miraculous. <laughs> yes, that, that is also true. So she she does she does science and somehow makes things explode. And yeah, she's alive somehow. So hey, that's good, I guess. <coughs> and we switch scenes to um, Gabe, where. He's admiring his fashion, but also at the same time remembering uh, this girl, Emily, her his love and whatnot. Uh, I think that could be her wife. And they're talking about, oh, um, he promised her to make her a dress and she's waiting for it and so on. And somehow he's rather depressed. He's kind of... Um, sad, like he, he wants her back and so on and he um, holds this uh, pendant or something and it shows 
a glimpse of the future where uh, to get what he wants, he needs to bring the world into chaos or something like that. And he kind of does because he's insane that way. But that's for a later time. We go back to Marionette who kind of finishes school and go back to uh, go back home. And while going back to uh, going back home, she she's hear a lot of voices um, saying how she's a klutz, she's doing it on purpose and whatnot, and um, you know just kind of mocks her. Before she can goes home, she's stopped by Chloe, who wants to bully her, and <clears throat> I, I I don't really understand this. If 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 this even happens, right? Like, what what's the point and goal? Well, honestly, I, I couldn't quite understand why Marinette was running away. Chloe, as far as I know, has always been a mental assault, not physical. In in the series, but uh, here, like, I I, I just mm, yeah. I, she doesn't quite have the build to be physically intimidating. But if, but when you put yourself in the shoes of a person who is not confident in herself, it does make sense in a way. But at the same time, too, like she's she's just fighting a cream puff, a cream puff with a lot of bark. Well, she's willing to. She's running into uh, oncoming traffic and nearly gets run over several times. Uh, yeah. That uh, I'm like, okay, at this point, you're better off just facing your bully because you're about to die otherwise. But Silver, facing my bully is scary. I ran to die. Well, then you're in luck. There, here comes an automotive. <clears throat> oh, yep, true that. Would you prefer a stick or shift to <laughs> death? Uh, before that, uh, I'll, I'll just bring it back for a bit because Marinette goes to the library to hide, trying to find an escape, and sees a boy. Oh no, our troubles! It's always a boy! Boy is good looking. Oh no, this is her, her big lucky day. Oh, how so, Silver? How so? Well, she actually says, come on, can I have a little good luck? <laughs> Oh, look, a boy. Oh, no. He's good looking, too. Look at that hair, those eyes, those perfect teeth. Fuck you. <laughs> well, I beg your pardon. <laughs> Jealous much? <laughs> you, no, you just you just gave me the F to the U. Not you, him. That good looking guy in the screen I'm watching right now. Asshole. <laughs> Oh boy! Oh, no, nothing, nothing to you, Silver. You're really awesome. <coughs> Norman, you're comparing yourself to a fictional character. Yes, let me be. That's like, that's like a, a girl watching a, an anime and try, and complaining she doesn't have that breast size. I mean, like no human being should have proportions like that. They snap in a small breeze. <laughs> that is also true. Oh boy, <coughs> I'm choking. But yeah, um, he she sees Adrian, and Adrian's kind of nice to her. Um, she falls down, being a klutz. Uh, he helps her up and calls her strange. So, um, where was I? Yes, uh, we we go to Gabe, and Gabe activates his dark powers to. Do evil stuff. And by him doing that, uh, the other Miraculous, the Ladybug and Cat Miraculous activates and finds owners to stop the evil. And with that, we come to the part where Marina is trying to off herself. Great! <laughs> I, I guess that you mentioned Silver, pick one uh, stick of uh, auto manual. <sighs> yeah. yeah, well, I mean, isn't she... She's running away from Chloe. The master is trying to catch Tiki. the wayward miraculous. 
tiki, both tiki and plague. Uh, mostly and, tiki, but yes. And he's about to catch a bus to the face. Oh, yeah. And the thing is, before the bus could ram uh, Master Fu, uh, Marinette jumps in and saves... Uh, J- Marinette jumps in and saves him. Okay, cool. And, you know, that's pretty cool. That is pretty cool and selfless. And the smart thing is, she jumps in and rolls with him. She doesn't become an isekai character. Yay, that's good in my books. This... <laughs> Meanwhile, truck is off to the side going, I'll get you next time, Marinette. <laughs> next time. Oh, God. Side tangent. Do you know that there's a manga where there's a truck driver that hits people and sends them to isekai worlds? Well, they sent everyone else. Why not? It's it's kind of a interesting story. Uh, if it's a clean hit, that means the person when they get reincarnated is going to be awesome. But if it's a bad hit, they're they're kind of reincarnated badly. So it is a pretty interesting read. I, I I wish I knew what. Sorry, I wish I remember what the manga was called. But yeah, it, it's it's pretty interesting. Anyway, um, carrying on before. Uh, Carcoon could finish them off. The driver breaks in time and managed to um, not make root pizzas out of them. <clears throat> and yeah, uh, it seems that Master Fu is, is saying, Oh, you, you saved me. That means you'll save the world and whatnot. And Marinette thinks, like, Oh god, this guy's crazy. What the hell did I do? Oh god, let me just get out of here. So. Uh, she does because either crazy person chasing him or Chloe. I, I think it's Chloe. Yep, Chloe is there after the traumatic moment that she had. Chloe is there to ruin her life even more. So Marinette says, okay, crazy person, I'm just going to run away, away, far away. And she, she does and she somehow stumbles upon... A building where she gets locked in somehow. On the other side of town, we see Adrian kind of doing his homework. Suddenly, his window open, and we see a silhouette of a cat. And when he goes to investigate, he sees a black cat. Oh, that's interesting. He tries to... What? Foreshadowing. Ah, I see. Yes. Aha. So. It whispers, kill everybody. Oh, yes. So, uh, when. When Adrian finds a ring with a blinking light on it, uh, he's just like perplexed. What is this tacky thing? Oh my god. And we'll, we we cut to another scene where this touted man is professing his love to his girlfriend where um, he hired musicians, bought an expensive diamond ring, had a good dinner and the girl says, Oh, this is so amazing. Everything's perfect. But sorry, person, I don't know. You're... I don't in love with you. I'm in love with Chad. Chad is awesome, big and muscular, and he treats me like shit. <laughs> I love Chad. And he's probably his brother. <laughs> <laughs> and he's shot through the heart. <laughs> and she's to blame. Oh god, I, I'm having more fun riffing on this show. <clears throat> Uh, so anywho, short guy is heartbroken and <coughs> <coughs> goes to not. Is this Notre Dame? I- I'm assuming it's Notre Dame. Yeah, it is. All right, cool. So he goes into Notre Dame, saying that, "Oh fuck, love! I, uh, I, uh, I, I don't like love. I will never love again." And somehow a butterfly goes flying near him, and kind of enters the ring and. 
turns him into a monster. Uh, one of the few things I like about this scene is that it made the butterfly menacing. And I remember you, Silver, mentioned that how could a butterfly be menacing? They're not menacing at all. Well, I was I was turned off almost immediately by uh, Hawk Moth. Yeah. It's like, oh, hide your sweaters and keep them out of your closet. Hawk Moth is on the loose. Uh, <clears throat> but how how is he here and now? Better before? Well, we'll we'll get to that. He hasn't yet accepted his full role as Hawk mm -hmm. Moth. But I, I do like the little sound effect they give on the butterfly, making it sound evil, where you can clearly tell that, hey, this creature is evil, so be careful. So anywho, um, we see the little guy turn into a monster, and we see the curator for the um, museum. I'm guessing it's a museum. Uh, telling stories about the gargoyles that will come up, uh, sorry, they will come back to life at night and will uh, guard Notre Dame from evil spirits. Oh, hello, Goliath. And it seems... It's like, it's like yeah, that's, that's New York. Stop appropriating our culture. That we've probably appropriated from you. <laughs> it's very appropriate. <laughs> I mean... Oh, man. Keith Davis is awesome. So... I can't say much, man. Um, I know reference from what I know. <clears throat> but anywho, um, we see Marinette's turn to discover stuff. And she enters a shop where it's kind of a Chinese team shop where it's got a lot of stuff. And guess what? This is Master Fu's shop. Somehow Marinette stumbles into it and gets... I don't know, recruited to become a superhero. And uh, she finds a pair of earrings underneath some, uh, underneath a uh, drawer or something. And the first thing she does is puts them on. What? Kid, are you, are you seriously? Yeah. What, you don't, you don't attach randomly glowing things to your body? No, do you? Oh yes, I, I. And then I turn off the light, and it pleases me so. Jacob, please do something. I don't get. Yes, something you don't get. So, something I don't get. Well, earlier when there was the whole chase going gone, and uh, Marinette uh, saved the old Asian guy. Well, the old Asian guy was basically chasing after those rings that suddenly became sentient and flew flew off, remember? Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> they ended up uh, landing inside uh, Marinette's... Uh, Backpack. School bag. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Where did they suddenly come from then? Well, the thing is... Uh... The form of the Kwamis, which is the little genies, as I call them, uh, they form themselves into jewelries. Um, as for cat, it's a ring. For ladybug, it's a pair of earrings. For hawk moth. Well, yeah. Well, yeah, uh, I, I get that. But how did it get from uh, Marinette's backpack to, uh, what was it? Uh, under a pot or whatever she was looking at. She flew out. Uh, Tiki, f Tiki flew out from the bag, became a ladybug, uh, flew around, and ended up in the bottom of the uh, cabinet, I'm calling it. Yep, that, that's how it no, happened. It didn't. No, it didn't come out of the backpack. It just appeared from... The ladybug appeared from behind one of the statues. <sighs> That that is true, but we don't see the scene where uh, Tiki just comes out on her own. Right. It's one of those things where you just have to accept it's Pinkie Pie. It's, it's got just the wrong series. <laughs> at least if there was Pinkie Pie here, I could laugh at something. This, I'm just like, what is going on? I know, especially you putting on glowing things. 
Oh god, why? <laughs> what? What? I can quote the uh, the superior Iron Man on this. It it glows in ways that please <laughs> me. It's sexy as hell. <laughs> that's a 3D animation, right? Nope, that's a comic oh. book. Oh. Wow. Actual comic book. <laughs> oh my god. Somebody was paid to write that. <laughs> Sexy as hell. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, Marinette, I'm guessing Marinette feels the same way too because she's putting on the earrings that she picked up on the ground just because they're glowing. And after doing that, um, Tiki comes out. She she is a ladybug Kwami creature thingy. Uh, in her words, call her a genie or something like that. But instead of granting her wishes, uh, she can grant her powers or become a superhero. So, long story short, Tiki here recruits... Too late. <laughs> Tiki here recruits Marinette to become the hero to save Perry. Uh, but Marinette says, no, 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 because uh, you're thinking of the wrong person, I'm a klutz and whatnot, and we start into a musical. Uh, any, you guys want to point out anything for the musical? Because I'm just going to skip over this. <clears throat> to be honest, the musical sections in the midst of chaos and destruction feel really poorly timed and just sort of drawn out. Kind of, right? <coughs> yeah, more than a little. Yeah. But I have to say, I, I do love the uh, remix of using the intro theme song for the introduction of a character's origin story. Kind of cool. I guess I wasn't paying close enough attention to, to realize, oh, hey, I mostly got the, the, the theme song from the montage that would follow a little uh, later. Yeah. Also, um, Tiki here is just angry at Marinette, saying that if you're not going to be a superhero, we're going to kick your ass. Oh, yes, what was her observation? Oh, women can wear pants oh, now? Yeah, and also they discover electricity. <laughs> and, oh man, they, they, they don't really set it up here, but uh, throughout history, there's multiple ladybugs who save the world from time of chaos. And the movie here doesn't really highlight that. Well, I, I don't know. To to be honest, I feel like they could have done a better job at describing that, but not doing so doesn't really hurt the plot. <clears throat> but anywho, after she was forcibly made to put on her outfit, she screams, and we cut to uh, Notre Dame where... The gargoyle is stalking an old man. And we see that over there, there is Cat Noir. And Ladybug kind of flies into him. And they get tangled. And, well, kind of their first introduction. <coughs> they bent it for... And an alternate title from the show. Miraculous Watermelon. <laughs> she does look like it, right? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, damn it. <coughs> so, anywho, they have a quick um, tat tat tat, and they kind of discover that they're both newbies in this line of superheroing thing, and they got no idea what they're doing. But for their first outing, they're pretty good. Um, pretty good as in they cause a lot of chaos and destruction, but hey, it's their first time and all. But we do see cool stuff from what they can do. Um, it seems that with their powers activated, they're kind of impervious, almost, um, well, almost what you call this, uh, almost invisible, and they can take a lot of punishment. 
Invisible? As in, uh, in, in uh, not get hurt? You mean invincible? Oh, invincible. invincible, yes, thank you. <clears throat> My bad. There's a wild joke somewhere there. Well, it's just the, the rest of us are all just vincible. Because uh-huh. if you're invincible, there has to be a vincible out there. Mm. Oh, man. Uh, sorry, I, I'm just trying to get the word. Uh, invincible? Yeah. Invincible and invisible. Okay. In- all right, cool, cool, cool. I, I, that, that minor change in vowels. All right, cool. But anywho, uh, they, they fight off with the gargoyle and we, we see something interesting here because in the show, um, we are shown that Marionette has this kind of ladybug vision where she sees stuff and combines uh, and, and use those items to kind of solve the monster of the day scenario here. But in the movie here, she has that vision where... She kind of processed things like, oh, I could do stuff with this. And uh, she can, what, okay, she uses her yo-yo to grapple to that point. So she swings from point A to point B, using it as a leverage point. So uh, seeing another point, she uses that to swing and so on and so on and so on. Which is kind of really interesting that her ladybug vision allows her to process things a lot faster and a lot uh what is the one i'm looking for faster and direct or um help me here silver with with words well i mean it's it's kind of like spider-man he's always running those calculations on screen and getting where he from point a to point b (coughs) but uh in some ways, this miraculous seems to be fast-tracking that for her. Mm. Now, personally, I'm still the, I'm still more a fan of the Mm webhead. Also, uh, one thing that uh, we forgot to mention, the yo-yo itself is a bit, uh, is a sentient where it can move on its own. So, uh, when she was like being dragged into the sky or whatever it is, the yo-yo was doing that. Uh, If we're talking about Spooderman, uh, he's doing that by attaching his webs to walls or poles or whatever it is to give him that momentum of swing. So, in Ladybug, it's not so much, but not really, which is kind of confusing. Well, either which way, I'm still more Spider-Man man. True. Superior, you know, man. superior or spectacular? Spectacular. <clears throat> so, anywho, we continue on. Uh, we see that Marionette comes in for the save for Cat Noir because, oh no, dumb kid got legs stuck on a railroad track. I wonder what would happen. Oh no, he's road pizza. Just kidding. Ladybug came in for the save. But with that, Train hits the gargoyle and somehow... Um, the akumatize the guy, or the transform the guy, and this is a big change from the series where usually, uh, Marionette and Cat Noir, sorry, a uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir would have uh, taken down the monster in some shape or form, and catch the Ladybug, sorry, catch the butterfly to kind of purify it and. Uh, do a control Z on the whole city, making sure that uh, all the uh, destruction has been reversed. But not in this one. Uh, it's it's left to destruction and whatnot. And the ladybug escapes somehow. Sorry, the butterfly escapes. My bad. Well, getting hit by a train will do that to you. I'm sure it would knock plenty of things loose. <laughs> also, the guy would turn back to normal, uh, and I'm sure he has feelings about <coughs> about um, his ex-girlfriend. But anywho, um, the two heroes set aside, talking and whatnot, and 
crazy old man in a trench coat comes in and tells them that you two needs to work together because uh, you two as one are more powerful separate, uh, more, more powerful together than separated. And they kind of fight with each other for a bit. And this kind of tracks with what uh, we earlier see in the show where when the two miraculous uh, Plague and Tiki comes out, he, he says that, oh guys, okay, um, don't fight. Uh, we need to work together. But they go their separate ways and so on. So these two are fighting and the old man kind of breaks down what their power sets are. Uh, so Tiki is the Kwame of creation while Plague is the Kwame of destruction. Uh, combine them two, you can get a pretty awesome sick wish. But that's besides the point. So um, <coughs> the, uh, the guys ask, how do you own all this? And he just says, I do because I'm old. Um, and kind of tries to make them to work together because if they work together they'll be more powerful and so on so they go home to their they go their separate ways going home and we see another song from cat and i'm i have a question yeah, but now he's all okay smitten. go ahead yeah, uh, first of all, is there a reason that the old Asian guy is, like, uh, trying to conceal his identity? I mean, when did he appear for the exposition in the show, anyway? Uh, to be honest, uh, the way that Master Fu works in the show is that uh, he selects the bearer of the miraculous. The, the show version versus the movie version is totally different because... Uh, in the show, uh, Marinette kind of helps him do stuff like, oh no, I, I want to cross the road. Uh, Marinette helps him. And he plants the uh, earrings in his bag. Sorry, in her bag. And for Adrian, uh, he does the same thing too. Uh, planting the ring in his bag and something, or something like that. So, uh, that's how it was set up. And later on, we discover that Master Fu here is the guardian for the Miraculous, where it's his job to take care of them and hand them out to people who he thinks are worthy. And Marinette finds that out later on because reasons. In this one, uh, in the movie, it's just that he's a creepy old man who knows a lot of stuff but doesn't really explain things. And it confused the shit out of the kids. <clears throat> and there's this um, kind of confusion that appears for the character and the audience. Because we as the audience know who that short man is. The characters don't. So it's this confusion that is Master Fu, you fucks. Don't you know? I guess not. I mean, technically... Technically, it does explain at the very start when the movie starts. Yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's for us to know. But for the characters, he doesn't say shit except work together and defeat Hawkmoth. Yeah. And while we're on the subject, uh, you said earlier that he's the one who chooses who who's going to bear which miraculous, but... Well, first of all, I noticed there's five others besides uh, <coughs> the ladybug and the cat. Mm -hmm. And can you explain a little bit about that? So, for the movie, you don't have to worry about it because it won't play a part at all until the second movie comes out, I think. But in the series, it's kind of uh, certain miraculous have certain powers. Uh, there is a stopwatch miraculous that has a bunny. Funny, right? It's in Wonderland reference. Haha. <laughs> and that thing controls time and space. Really powerful. There is a fox miraculous that allows the user to create illusions and so on. But that's besides the point. Um, the point is, certain miraculous have certain powers and 
Master Fu here hands doesn't really hands them out to people. It's uh, Ladybug's intuition that feels like okay, I f I need help. I trust this person. I go to Master Fu. I'll borrow a miraculous. Go to this person and hand this person a miraculous, saying, "I trust you with this. After you finish, hand it over," which some people do. So with their help. They defeat the villain of the week. That's in the series. But that still leaves how did then uh, Hawkmoth get his miraculous since that one's one, a part of the of the others. Uh, that one. Mm. They didn't really set it up in the movie, did they? Uh, in the series. There was only quick flashbacks, but that's about it. Ah, uh, yeah, I think, yeah, uh, in the movie version, somehow, uh, he discovered it somehow and bought it off a black market trader, I think, something like that, I don't know. But in the series, he kind of discovered a temple where he ransacks the place and took two of the miraculous, uh, one is the uh, butterfly or... I think the butterfly miraculous, and also the peacock miraculous. The one one of the reasons why Emily, uh, Gabe's wife, is dead, dead. Yeah, is because the peacock miraculous was damaged, and she used it. So while using a damaged miraculous, causes you to well die faster. <clears throat> so that is for the series for the movie I got no idea how they're gonna bring that in or even if they do bring it in <coughs> so okay yeah so so that's why I mentioned earlier on to me that the movie is its own alternate universe where it's doing its own thing and doesn't have to do anything with the series, which I really appreciate. Especially Hawkmoth's uh, musical number. Oh, God. Where he's essentially saying, if chaos will bring out these miraculous, then I'll provide the chaos. And he is so much more, for lack of a better term, animated. Uh, wearing a top hat, doing a dance down uh, city streets and alleys. <laughs> yep, yep. And we're... I'm a little confused where he's going with all these skulls and imprisoned people. It's like France has a very interesting penal system if this is what they do. True. We're banishing you to the skull prison. To, to, to be honest, Silver, when I was watching, I skipped this musical number because, yeah, awesome, but nah, man, like I'm just out of here. But it's interesting where, yeah, Movie version of Gabe or Hawkmoth here is more flushed out. He's he, we see a lot out of him, so that's pretty cool. <coughs> oh yeah, and he also looks like I am the spy. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He does. Yep. And he's French. <laughs> And that's a bad thing? <laughs> <laughs> Depends who you are. I summon an you. Yes, Silver. Oh, I'm just saying, I dominate you. <laughs> oh, no. <coughs> so, yeah. um, We see um, Hawk Moth going to this prison place, um, freeing the prisoners and giving them powers because they're angry they're angry little people that wants to what else rule over the world so of course <laughs> he akumatized a mime and i have to say that the mime here is badass he's a stand user from Joe. i know right <laughs> Oh, and the lady magician is yeah she she she's okay. I mean, there's nothing much you can say. She she's she's okay. 
She looks hot. Yay, whatever. She's a she's a prisoner of Azkaban. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So we we see Hawkmoth getting his armies for chaos and so on. So within that year, a lot of chaos happening. So um, we go back to the surface where Alia mentioned that uh, mentions to Marinette that uh, could you believe that Paris has his, their own superheroes and they make uh, they they make a good couple, the boyfriend and girlfriend. And Marinette says, "Oh no, they're they're not a couple." And uh, Alia says, "I have pictures. You want to see?" And when they show pictures, it's them together being tangled up and hugging. Uh, or water skiing, or doing stuff together and whatnot. And first question is, how the fuck did Alia got all those pictures? It's it baffles the mind because it's from places there's no way where she could have been. I know, right? It's one of those cases where, oh, how was she in Notre Dame? Taking that picture, or how was she up on that thing, or how did she? A lot of hows. Silver, help me. She hacks the. She hacks the uh, surveillance equipment within Notre Dame, and took over the. Uh, <laughs> took over the photography, of the security system. Yes, that's what I'll roll with. You know. Completely pulling this out of thin air, but you know. You know what, Silv? I wish the huh? I wish Notre Dame had security that good, otherwise the roof wouldn't have set on fire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, too soon? Oh boy, you not too soon. <laughs> oh, you know what? I, I'll I'll buy it. Um it works for me. It works for me. <coughs> so It's all I can think it's all I can think to answer. I mean She's the supportive friend. She's the hype for the heroes. Odd thing that I appreciate is that I think they moved her little beauty mark off from the center of her head. Because I was always mistaking that for a bindi. Didn't, wasn't it always to the side instead of the middle? Hold on, let me just check quick. Yeah, I'm also... I always thought it was in the center of her head, but... Yeah, I'm also checking previous pictures of her from uh, past episodes. No, I think it's, I think it's on the side. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Well, maybe. Hmm. But either yeah, which way, I was. Gonna... I could have sworn it was on the center of her forehead at one point, but either way. Hmm. We we need to keep moving. All right. Yeah. 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 Uh, we, we've been here for a bit too long. But I do appreciate your knowledge of the Vindi. That's Indian, right, Silva? Yep, yes. Very appreciate. Um, not many people know that. Yeah, it's always on the side. Well, I don't know. A ho- ho- Sorry. Well, I don't know much about it. I just know ah, of it. Cool, cool. <clears throat> but anywho, uh, we see another attack in Perry. Where the two magicians are doing their thing, uh, the mime and the magician at least, and they kind of does do chaos. And the reason that why they're robbing a bank is, I don't know. They just want to rob a bank. And after that, we go back to the guys where they're talking about stuff. Um, I'm just gonna cut it short because they meet up. And they, <coughs> uh, they they meet up and they hang out. Uh, Alia and Neo are going to ride the roller coaster while Adrian and Marinette are trying to hang out. And uh, they they kind of hit it off because um, Marinette says that her father works in a bakery and he thinks it's cool. And she says, I have some leftover macaroon for you to try. Uh, being the class that she is, she kind of drops everything on the floor. And Adrian here discovers her sketchbooks. And they, and he says, they're really good. Wow. Um, they're, they're really, really awesome. And before 
they can hit it off even more. Um, Gabriel calls Adrian saying, where are you? And he says, I'm in the uh, amusement park. And Gabe says, uh, you better go home because it's not going to be, it's going to be dangerous. Like uh, I'll send a car for you and so on. And I, I, I don't know what to say, but it feels like he cares for Adrian safety. Do you guys agree with that? Yeah. In this case, but he's also that he can't spare the time to go himself. Oh, I guess. It's like he's trying to have it two ways. Yeah. I mean, in later on in the show, uh, we he... He explains himself, but still, being a crappy dad is still being a crappy dad. <clears throat> yep. So, yeah, anyway, um, tries to go home, and uh, the two chaos dealers comes in, and they uh, do a bit of chaos. But before that, we, we see a kid and their father playing with a crossbow trying to shoot down a wooden duck and when they kind of shoot the duck we see the mime kind of pulling out a gun and shooting it at the same time which kind of have this effect of blowing the duck up and it's kind of cool but at the same time too it's really dangerous so yeah uh, pick your pick uh, have your pick so, a magician does chaos and do stuff, and yeah, um, it's time for uh, Ladybug and Cat Noir to jump into action. And yeah, um, this is one of the, oh, not a musical number, god damn it. This is one of those parts. Sorry. Oh yeah, this. Go ahead. Hey, this is Marinette now saying, I've got to dig deep, I've got to go strong, and I'm just like, J just do it, please. But I just I don't need you to <laughs> sing about it. This is panic. obviously, but at the same time too, I do. Uh, I understand yet dislike it at the same time because she needs to dig deep into herself to find a confidence that she can do what is needs to be done to save her loved ones or the city of Perry. <clears throat> But at the same time, too, must you do it in song? God damn it. Yeah, that was a bit much. And also, I I'm trying to compare this to Ponies, because checking out, there's 10 songs, including in the credits, while Ponies have 8 songs, including 1 in the credits, where I'm, I'm just thinking, huh, why was Pony not that bad, yet Ladybug irks me? And I, I I can't. You know what? I I think I know why. <clears throat> I think I know why because the musical number in Ponies move the show along. Um, remember the part where they were singing in the uh, sequestria, where they're singing numbers and whatnot. And while that's happening, Twilight was trying to steal the orb or something like that. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so at least that musical number played kind of a distraction and it moved the uh, show along. While over here, it doesn't. It kind of. How is it? It's kind of a musical number for a musical number's sake. And what it does is just box down the show. I mean. You you can say that oh this is those this is that moment where Marinette discovers her inner strength where she can become the hero that she knows she can be and whatnot, <clears throat> but uh, to, to be honest, like is it the same or is it different? What what, what guys? What do you think? No, I agree. It, basically, they're saying, okay, stop. We need to have a song. Okay, now the story can progress. Oh, yeah. Okay, now stop. We need to sing another song about what a character is already obviously feeling. You know, they're, they're not blending 
the the music with the flow of the story they're they're using it as a stop sign and what's the difference between ponies the movie at least uh g4 movie versus this one well it accelerated parts getting ready for the festival uh expl- uh abridging the trip back to canterlot as the tempest is singing to twilight mm-hmm. Uh, winning over the hippogriffs. All of that is happening. It's motion, it's activity, whereas Marinette is in a darkened environment, singing only to herself and not interacting with those around her. Yep, 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 yep. Even uh, in the very beginning, uh, the interaction that she has with people is kind of all in her head. And I'm noticing that we're running slow, so let's turbo up. Uh, we see that Marinette... Uh, sees a baby, she tries to save the baby, but the baby was a decoy. Uh, the villain comes, uh, comes to the front saying, Ah, yes, Ladybug and Cat Noir, hand over your miraculous to me, or we'll destroy the city. Ha 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 ha. And, uh, they kind of beat up the demon, sorry, the villains, because they work together and they realize, Oh, if we're together, that means we're powerful. Good, let's do this. And they save the save the day. And from that point on, uh <clears throat> we have a montage where the heroes are kicking ass, defeating the villains, and we see that Marinette is I would say Mar- Marinette is has confidence in herself and she's doing a lot better in life and school. Uh, she's playing the recorder perfectly. She's doing a lot of awesome things at the balancing beam and has the courage to sit next to Adrian and not making herself like a bumbling fool. Awesomeness. That's really good. That, that, that's progression in my books. And also... Uh, they promote the new Volkswagen. Mm. That part I don't remember. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's underneath the Eiffel Tower where they, they promote and launch the, uh, Volkswagen Ladybug and Cat Noir is promoting some kind of Volkswagen. It, it's a black car with green, uh, highlights and whatnot. It's, it, it it's 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 there. I'm, I'm just gonna say that it's there. Pony wish they had that kind of money. <laughs> oh boys! But then that it'd just be a pink truck with the twilight sparkle cut out in the back. <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. Applejack, Rainbow Dash, and Rarity. Oh no, Pinky! They're just doing the head nod. Yep. <coughs> oh boys! So anywho, um. Uh, Cat Noir and Ladybug, they hang out for a bit, talk, and Cat Noir is fallen for Ladybug. And Cat invites Ladybug to go to a very special place in his heart, and that's the theater that her mom used to perform. It's closed down now, but... Somehow, Cat Noir got special privileges to get in. I think that's called breaking an entry? Probably. And Silver, there, there's the card uh, Jacob posted in Discord. <laughs> eh, I still like my car better. What's your car, by the way? Acura. Ah, cool, nice. <clears throat> I'm thinking about changing a car, but uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see how that goes. Gosh. Anywho, um, Cat Noir plays on the piano and kind of serenades Ladybug, and they two sing, dance, and almost kiss. Oh yay! This this is this is my quote unquote wish for the show. The two lead characters finally understand that they're meant for each other, and they fall in love and discover that and kiss. Now why won't you kiss, you... 
Ah. They kept shipping because one is loved in the one is in love with another and another is in love with the other. They're the same person, but they don't know that. Yeah, true, true that, but that's why it's so frustrating. Yeah, side tangent because oh god, damn it! In in earlier seasons of Ladybug, Cat Noir is so in love with Ladybug, but she's trying to keep it professional, understandable. Later on. Cat falls in love with Marionette, but doesn't really go nowhere. And then Ladybug falls in love with Cat Noir. Like, the fuck? Ugh! God fucking damn it, this show. <clears throat> Calm down. At what point did they reveal their identities to one another? Never. Uh, at least well, I did. The show added. Silver, sorry. Uh, the show added that Ladybug can't oh, learn yes. the identity of Cat Noir basically as a tool to draw this out over how many now? Five yeah. seasons? I, I think it's also the fact that um, it's for the protection of the... <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. It's for the protection of the um, Miraculous because, like I mentioned before, uh, the ladybug of sorry, uh, the miracles of creation and the miracles of destruction. Once they combine, they could create a wish so powerful that it can grant you any wish. So keeping them separate is kind of a big deal. So not knowing the true identity of the user, at least for this one, is important. But it's all bullshit and whatnot. Uh, fuck it. So where was I again? Yes. Cat Noir. Prof sorry. Well, basically, Ladybug turned down his advances. Yeah, because I'm in love with another boy. And that boy is sexy. He has your hair, your eyes, your lips, but doesn't wear a cat suit like you. Oh, I'm, I'm not into you, I think. Oh, <laughs> uh, boys. So, anywho, um, Ladybug kind of says no and goes home. Um, Cat Noir just says, oh, don't go, please, no. So, he goes back home and we see Gabe. Um, he, <coughs> he's kind of haggard and disheveled and he doesn't look like his good looking self. And he's worried about his son because his son haven't come home yeah he didn't came home last night and he's worried and <clears throat> and this is the part where I feel sorry for Gabe because he's worried for his son's safety and his son just tells him to F off because why all of a sudden why, why are you worried about me now you never you never had that inkling of being worried before. So what's changed? And storms off to his room. And to be honest, I don't blame the guy. Because earlier in the show, or at least the movie, uh, when Natalie, the personal assistant to Gabe, says that, um, how about you have dinner with your son? Uh, says that, no, not important. I have other things to do. And Adrian hears that. So, on the one hand, I can understand. On the other hand, it feels bad. What do you guys think? Um, Jacob, you first, man. Yeah, that was a pretty dick move of no, that part. So, yeah, I don't blame... Uh, I don't blame the, uh, the guy for basically being pissed off at him, but there's also the... What do you call it? Emotional quandary, or no, quandary is not the right word. <coughs> dilemma? Basically, emotional... Dilemma? Uh. Yeah. Because the girl, he was... He had a crush on... Crush on basically turning mm -hmm. down. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he's extra bitter. Oh. <laughs> to on that one, too. Uh, silver. Sorry. And he's throwing his... And he's throwing himself... He's throwing himself a pity party. Oh, yeah, got it. 
Oh yeah, I forgot to mention one of the songs that they used was Carol's Whisper. And <laughs> might I remind you how old they are? Would you like to know how dope? Which one? It's the saxophone song where I think Cat Noir hears when he sees. <laughs> oh, that one! Mm-hmm. Yeah. Might I remind you how old they are? Would you like to know how do- fourteen? No. Sixteen in this movie at least. Sixteen. Okay. <gasps> Silver, what about you? Well to be honest, this is where I feel like Ladybug is actually getting muscled out of her own show. Her gaining confidence is suddenly taking a back seat to the emotional ties between Adrian and, and Gabriel and their strained relationship, Adrian's broken heart, uh, their need for reconciliation and rising above tragedy. So in a weird way, I feel like at this point, it's more about them than it is Ladybug. But at the same time, too, the show is also called Ladybug and Cat Noir. But I, I do see what you mean uh, by the hero of the show out being outshined by the quote unquote sidekick. Well, partner, but not really. Yeah, but at the same time, too, like how how do you okay, if you were you, right, Silver? How would you play the movie? Hmm. Well, I think you need to have more of an emotional investment for Marinette beyond Adrian, <clears throat> her parents, her relations with them, or her new friends, and saving them in the middle of what will be a pretty impressive uh, final battle. Uh, she needs to understand, she needs to look around and realize how many people really care about and love her, not just hyperfixate on one guy. Mm. Yeah, I see what you mean. And also, having this short conversation, I just realized something. We don't have that with great power comes great responsibility moment. Hmm. And nope, not where, she, not where she fails to save someone. Yeah, it's not even that. Like What I mean by that is that she has all this power and abilities that she suddenly has. And yeah, granted, she's doing all she... <clears throat> she's using it uh, to save the people of Paris so that's good but at the same time too we don't see her really taking that lesson to heart or at least embracing it or kind of learning from it it's like she's she, whenever she puts on the suit it's autopilot you guys know what I mean? Yep, it sort of blinks and tells her what yeah, to do. Kind of, because, like, at least in, uh, I'm trying to think about a superhero that's not Spider Man. Maybe, uh, you know, Spider Man is the best example, because Spi- <laughs> <laughs> Spider Man is best. <laughs> period. All on the Superman. Yeah, no, that's true. Oh, ah. have you seen the new show, uh, My Adventure with Superman? I have, but let's not get... We're already close oh, to two cool. hours of an hour and a half movie. Yeah, okay, uh, let's let's speed up. Uh, yeah, so Adrian's pissed off his... Whatever. So, uh, next day, Marinette has plans uh, asking Adrian out to the ball. Adrian says, No, my heart is to another, but I'm heartbroken right now. Oh, now I'm going to hear some Linkin Park and Evanescence. Off I go. And Marinette is heartbroken because the boy she loves um, rejects her. Oh no. The fuck. And she... Not knowing he's in love with her with her after he... Eh. I'm just speeding things. Well, look at this one. At least it's better than what Marinette did in the show. I guess! Which is no... How long did you know Adrian? Adrian, uh, uh, Adrian. That, wait, that's the that's the guy. That's his yeah, name, Adrian. Right? How, how long? I, uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Oh my god. The way that they play Adrian in the show that he's a fashion model. He is a athletic person. He's the uh, he he's squeaky clean. He's very popular and he's a model kind of deal. And everybody wants to be with him. And everybody sees him, he wants to be him and so on. Blah 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 blah. <clears throat> but anyway. <clears throat> yeah and hmm? Yeah, I know, but I mean, the, did she know, know him from a long, for a long time, or was it just like the first episode, first meeting? Kind of. Nah, he's kind of well known, so it's. She, she, how do I put this? She knows him, but never met him in person until she went to school. Ah. Kind okay. of deal. You know, like you. Sorry. So, so it's basically she knew him before she met him for the first yeah, time. Yeah, it's like how you know Silver for a long time before going on the podcast and talking with him personally. Kind of deal. Yeah, yeah, but I'm not actively stalking Silver. That you know of? <laughs> Shh, don't give it a waste. <laughs> <laughs> but anywho, um, another song, another thing, blah, 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 heartbreaks and so on. And then Hawk Moth here... Kind of does something really interesting that has never been done in the show. He <coughs> akumatizes himself while put uh, while still wearing the hawk moth uh, armor, and he does a lot of chaos. He destroys buildings. Um, a lot of bad things he done, and. Uh, she kind of saved the day for a bit, or at least do a lot of rescuing. And we see um, Adrian having a pity party, uh, hearing Clarice whisper playing because he's so sad. And he sees the ring uh, blinking, uh, calling for his attention, but uh, he ignores it because the more you ignore it, the more they want to chase after you. <laughs> Which somehow is true, but don't be a dick. That's your work phone. Well, that was bad well, advice from his friend from earlier from the park. Oh, but like I mentioned before, it's his work phone. There's a big difference. <laughs> Still, yeah. Well, it's also good he has those headphones in, otherwise he would just hear the massive explosions. <laughs> also true. Yeah. Uh, you, Silver, you mentioned something about um, Hawk Moth doing something really cool, and this was it? Yeah, I mean, this is him going all out, which is something I don't think the show ever tackled. I have to agree with you for now until I watch end of season five, I guess. <sighs> so, anyway, I'm going to move. Um, we see this... Please. We see <laughs> this... Um, shadow thingy attacking the people and Ladybug is twirling her yo-yo as a shield and uh, we see that she's knocked back and yeah the, the city is kind of in danger Cat uh, sees the chaos puts on his outfit and rushes through saving Ladybug from getting blasts from butterflies um, Ladybug being a bit snarky and Cat Noir also being a bit snarky, saying, Why did your boyfriend didn't come and help you? And, yeah. Ladybug just says, Not now, we have serious things to do. And Cat says, Never mind, I, I can handle this on, all on my own. And Ladybug softly reminds him, No, we have to work together, because together we're strong. Oh no, you're kind of... Oh no. So, Cat Noir fights Hawk Moth for a bit and misses his uh, cataclysm. And the Eiffel Tower is broken and they fall to the river. Uh, when he falls, he part of the tower hits him in the head and he's a bit concussed. Ladybug comes in, saves him, and Hawk Moth does something cool here. He floats on the water and turns the water to lava. I don't know how he does it, but it's freaking cool. And one thing pops into my mind when uh, 
Mary, sorry, Ladybug saves uh, Cat Noir and puts him onto a plank or a portion of the tower. And me seeing that lava, thinking, oh, look, it's an Anakin moment. Speaking of Anakin moment, Hawkmoth goes full Sith Lord on that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that's, that's just cool. <clears throat> I guess you can say he has the high ground! Oh boy. But anywho, um, <coughs> Hawk Moth threatens um, Mer- uh, Ladybug and, like, saying to him, Don't you dare hurt cat, and going for the attack. Uh, somehow, Hawk Moth here develops mind control, safe powers where he can. Force lift and force choke somebody. So I'm I'm really confused with how he got that power set. So he forcefully takes the earring from Marinette and integrates uh, integrates it with his um, pendant or whatever it is, and he became a little bit more powerful. And he's trying to grab Cat Noir's ring. But Cat Noir uh, holds and fights back. And we see, as retaliation, Hawk Moth kind of floats him above and do little thousand paper cuts. So before he could deal the final blow, uh, Marinette jumps in to save him and take the final blow. Which surprisingly doesn't really hurt her. I don't know how. <clears throat> um. So, character shields to full yeah. power. So Hawk Moth, uh, sorry, Marinette saves Cat Noir, but doesn't really go far from them. Uh, Hawk Moth picks Cat Noir up, and by this point, with all the abuse that was happening, his mask was broken off. And when he picks him up, he sees, oh shit, this is my son, Adrian. And he says, what the hell am I doing? All this, oh no, he kind of has a, what you call this, uh, moment or, what's the one I'm looking for? Realiz- realization? That what he's doing is revelation. Revelation? Like, uh, he has this revelation of, what I'm, he's missing the point to what he's doing and he detransforms and kind of I'm sorry and he explains himself to Adrian because knowing that what the miracles can do he wants to use them to say uh, get his wife back and hearing this Adrian kind of have that bonding moment where they hug and whatnot. And the reason why he couldn't be a good father to Adrian is because what Adrian really needs now is his mum. And he couldn't do that for him. But in all honesty, I think it's all bullshit. (laughs) Why? Because even though Adrian needs a mum, the most important part is... He needs to be there for his son because the son has emotional damage from mother not being there. So he has to pick up the slack to support him. But him being a dick, not being there for him because, oh, I am not a suitable person to take care of my son because what he needs now is a mother. And you leave him alone? The fuck? You know, the, 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 the yeah, that was just that was yeah. Fun. Okay, the the bullshit part you can do here, not in the story, but the bullshit part here you can do is, I marry another woman so that my son could have a mother figure, or you know what? Fuck it, Natalie. Why don't you take care of my son? Problem solved, right? That's <sighs> God damn it. So, anywho. Uh, yeah, I'm also a bit frustrated with this part a little bit, but 
well, also maybe because of this, what you just said right now, but also because, well, this is supposed to be the finale, and uh, it sort of underperforms, honestly. Uh, I, 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 um, how, how do I put this? For me, it's the years of abuse of watching the series, and having a conclusion like this is better than what I've seen in show. <coughs> so, yeah, that's on my end. But also, I'm used to this because ponies. So, anywho, um, they hug it out. They kind of recon. Uh, they they get back together. They reconcile. reconcile thank you. Uh, and the uh, and Kiki goes back to uh, Marinette, and Marinette sees all the chaos and thinks, oh, what should I, whatever should I do? Um, the old Chinese guy, uh, Mr. Fu, comes in saying that, you're the, you're, you're the miracles of creation, you can do stuff, blah, 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 and so on, and so on, so on. So, I think you know what to do. So, she goes to the people of Paris saying that, yo, guys, you guys did great. Um, with your powers combined, we can rebuild Perry. And they all cheer Ladybug's name. And somehow she absorbs that positive power that the people of Harris are giving to her. And she kind of resets everything. And this is a bit different from what happened in the show. <clears throat> is this the part where you said that in the show, at the end of Monster Battle, they, they just use their powers to fix <coughs> everything? Yes. And here's the thing. The way that it's done in the show is that, yes... Uh, Cat Noir, Ladybug, fight Monster of the Week, uh, capture the Ladybug, uh, purify it, and in between that, she kind of bullshits her power into creating some kind of quote unquote lucky charm. Said lucky charm could be anything and everything. Pick one. It could be a bicycle chain, it could be even a gun. Who don't, who knows? So, uh, after defeating monsters and saving the day, she uses her lucky charm, uh, throws it into the air, says the word lucky charm, and it resets everything. Control Z. And everything's back to normal. Uh, in the movie, it's a bit different. So, I got no idea how it works. So, once that's done, everything's set to normal, and Perry is safe once again. Uh, we take a few seasons and it's time for the ball. At the ball, we see Marinette comes in with her dress looking so fine. Uh, she goes up to her friends asking, where is, um, Adrian? And... Alia and Nino just says, oh, he's outside a bit, wanting to spend some time alone. And she goes to him. Uh, she goes to him and calls Cat Noir. And he's surprised and turns around to see Marinette. And they know each other's secret now. And they can be a couple. And now uh, Adrian is very happy. And they're dancing and before we can see that stupid kiss that I want they cut to the DN part and I'm raging Be why Be because it's cut off the kiss or is it because of walls cut off the kiss do you know how long the blue balls yeah, continue do you know how long fans have been waiting for that fucking kiss god fucking damn it <clears throat> so anywho uh, after the, the end there's a <coughs> after credit scene every show now needs to have an after credit scene oh by the way I think Gabriel's in jail now because of destroying Paris but not really but still he's in jail for inciting chaos and whatnot. so he entrusts Natalie with this information about his wife being kind of a corpse in his dungeon. 
And then dance! Yay! So, let's go to Final Thoughts. Silver, my friend, what do you think? Well, it's certainly a much more approachable, self-contained story <laughs> than trying to track all the interactions of the Miraculous series across five seasons. Problem is, as you pointed out, the music is more stop, let's have a song. Okay, now we'll get the story moving again. Uh, ultimately, I, I'm i afraid I missed the boat on on enjoying this series. I had an awkward introduction. I've watched a few episodes, been thoroughly confused, and I think I'm just not the right audience for it. So if you enjoy Miraculous, more power to you. Uh, have fun. But for me, it's a curiosity, but not something in which I'm going to invest a lot of time or energy, especially if they're just going to draw out the will they won't they over so many oh, seasons. So the ed in between, it's like, oh, he, uh, Marinette's introduced to this guy, Luca. He's kind of an awesome guy. And then uh, Adrian is introduced to this girl named Kagami, and who's just really awesome to him. And like, oh, fuck you. Sorry. It's just... Oh, repress emotional damage. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> emotional damage. By the way, Silver, as a contained story for this one, do you like it? Well, like I say, the emotional core seems to flip between characters, so I'm not really sure I latch on to any one person. I enjoyed it as much that it was a approachable standalone story. Mm. So saying that, sorry, not so much that I'm hyper in, hyper invested mm, in the characters. All right. So the sh the story's okay, but the characters need a bit more work, something like that, right? Yeah, a little bit all more right, work. Right, right. Jacob, what about you, man? Yeah, pretty much the problem with the uh, well, characters are a bit un underdeveloped, especially the miraculous. Is the I forget what their names were. I just know that flag or whatever is his name, the yeah, black flag. cat thing. That's correct, flag. You got it right. Yeah, but he's basically just the uh, Sparky Sparkeroni that talks. I. Mm. Oh wow! How 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 do I want to defend plague? Because you're 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 not wrong, but you're not right at the same time too. It feels like he's oh god. Yeah, I mean like okay. I, I I'm clouded by my memories of him in the series. Yes, if you're looking at him in the context of this movie, yes, he's kind of yeah, yeah he's kind of there. Like he's just. There because he's the guy powering up the cat miraculous. So yeah, but <clears throat> um, in the show he does a lot. But well, yeah, whatever. Fuck it. Up. So yeah, yeah. But yeah. <clears throat> other than that, I mean, the story was good, but uh, oh, nothing to write home about or anything. All right. So I mean, it is it's certainly better than the show from what I've seen or heard. Mm, all right. So. Um, just for context, for the audience at home and also for me, for us, how much of Miraculous have you consumed? Personally, not much really. As I said, I sort of uh, saw the odd episode or two, I don't know. And most of it, I've seen clips from the okay, show. Okay, so basically, you're kind of in this scenario where... I, a grand total of one episode mishmash into this thing where I've seen one episode, but it's mishmash. Something like that, right? Kind of. Right. So, ah. so as its own show, as is in its own container for this quote unquote movie, what do you think? Well, on its own, the movie was fine. Mm, all right, all right, cool, 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 cool. And as for me, <clears throat> I'll say that on its own, for its own merits, and what it was trying to build, I feel like this movie was pretty okay. 
the songs were a bit too much for me. It didn't really move the story along. It, it's kind of what Silva mentioned before. It's it, it, it kind of stops the show or the movie just so that they can have a song. And it's kind of that. Like, it doesn't really smoothly flows the episode the show along or the story along there are certain scenes where if people want to debate me on this yes there, there are some scenes where uh, example is the scene where marionette tr- discovers her own powers and whatnot and yeah she moves along and fights the villain or hawk moth uh, having his own musical number and <clears throat> Uh, freeing the prisoners and so on. Yeah, but but the overall thing is that it feels it, it doesn't flow naturally. It feels like a stopgap between uh, scenes. Like he, he's just doing this because, or they're just they're just doing this because they want a musical number. It's it doesn't feel natural if you know what I mean. <clears throat> yeah, but compared to the series. <sighs> This is 1,000 times better. And like Silver mentioned, there's a beginning, middle, and end. Even though the ending is frustrating. And like I mentioned before, I'm so used to this right now because of ponies. I... So yeah, that's, that's about it. That's about it. So, let's wrap it up. <coughs> uh, let's wrap it up indeed. If you guys have... Any <laughs> if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themeshowgmail.com and you can also res- reach us on the Twitter. So the show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sun. So, Silver, where can the good people find you? You can find me on Twitter, DeviantArt, and YouTube under MLP Silver Quill, which will also have links to my Ko-fi and Patreon if you wish to support. I also have a weekday puns mm, channel. Nice. Just do a search for weekday puns. Just to drive people a little bit bonkers with wordplay. Silver, so on a side tangent, uh, after starting the channel, have you gotten a lot of uh, non-pony people coming in? Mm, no, they're usually, it's usually pretty small viewership, mm, but it's fun. All right, all right. Because like, uh, there's always this scenario of, oh, I've been doing ponies and I start a new channel and I've been getting more, what you call this, uh, more visitors from uh, the interest and whatnot. All right, so it's just, there is, but it's just not a huge amount, right? Not a huge amount, but that's okay. I'm mostly just doing awesome, this for awesome, fun. Awesome, awesome. That's, that's, always good. that's always good. Doing the things you love. Anything else? Mm, nope, I think that about covers it. Won't have uh, conventions for a little yeah, while. Man's, the, by the sound of you just talking to us about the convention scene and whatnot, y- you mentioned that what last week you were haggard and tired and just feel like crap. <coughs> yep, it's pretty demanding. Rest up, man. Rest up. Like you, you deserve it. You deserve it. After taking on fifteen panels, god damn it, that's just. Whew. You're a, you're a workhorse, man. Well, like I say, I like to I like to be yeah, involved now. Awesome, awesome. Jacob, what about you, man? Uh, you can find me on the DeviantArt under the username Yakafon Torkat, under the Twitter username Tales of the Ashes. If you're interested in reading the story Tomorrow Rising, you can find it on twinfiction.net. And if you're interested in reading an original story featuring anthropomorphic animals in medieval from, in medieval fantasy setting called <coughs> Tales of the Ashes. You can find it on the tales of the ashes.com. Awesome, awesome. Go do so, guys. And please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And also Stitch Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on live.com. Links are in the show notes. If you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash MBS show. With every support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous. I would like to thank Jacob, Lucky Knight, and also Master of Light. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I am Cecil Vakril. 
And yeah, we'll guys catch you next week with I'm guessing more ponies. See ya. Adios. Bye bye. I'm glad to say that that's gonna be the only ladybug thing we'll do for a while now. I'm okay with that. More than a little okay. Agreed. Okay.